Hello, I'm Steve with Touch the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. I want to talk today about the joy of the Lord, Nehemiah 8, 10. Uh, I'm just going to quote it. I'm not going to even bother reading out of the Bible because, I mean, I'm just going to quote a few scriptures. But anyhow, here we go. You know, uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Okay? So, the enemy's trying to chip away at that all the time. I mean, steal our joy. I'm going to kind of get into it in a second. But, um... But God, where's his joy? What's his joy? And that's fulfilling the purpose and will and destiny that he has for us. To be conformed into his image, to be sons of his. That was the, that was the theme behind the cross. That's why, that's why that all transpired. You know, that's where God gets joy. You know, in people being delivered, set free, turned into sons of God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit all living in you. You know, that's the theme I'm going to stay on. And the other theme that I'm going to stay on is God's the ultimate equal employment opportunity. Equal employment. We're all equal. I'm sorry, I've got kind of a little sidetracked there. In the kingdom of God. Big name preachers or little name preachers. We all have a mission and a purpose. You may not have a Billy Graham moment, but you might. But anyhow, I mean, we put emphasis on stature, posture, you know, big buildings, churches. You know, all that stuff can become idols, you know. How many members you got in your congregation? How many came to the, to the service? You know, niceties of it, you know, the pleasantries of it. We put emphasis on money. Okay, well, yeah, day, and I'm not, you know, you talk about money, people get all pissy. I don't even ask, for, I'm not even asking for an offering. I'm not, I'm not even going to go there. That's not even just, you know, there's some things that the Lord showed me are going to transpire, and I'm just, but I'm not going to go there. So, David was a billionaire in today's world. But what about the widow's might? She gave more than all of them did. You know, they, it's a, you know, I mean, Americans, church connotates a move of God with money. You're blessed because you got a new car and you got a nice building and da da da. God can do something without it too. And I'm not, you know, it's not the poor mentality of it either. It's not the other side of it because you can have a love of money and be broke and be poor and homeless. And have an attitude towards money. Uh, you know, it's a, it is a necessity. You do need it. But that's not where our joy is. It shouldn't lie in that. It shouldn't lie in all that other stuff. It should be in when we're flowing in the will of God. And the will of God is to reach souls, as many as we can possibly reach. And it may be in the church. Some people in the church are sick. Need help. Absolutely. You know, God can minister to my wife ran into a situation the other day at church and got a chance to pray for this lady and just minister to her about various different ways. I'm not going to go into the details of it. But, you know, so I don't know, you know. Well, I know when I'm in that flow, when I'm in where God wants me to be, it's like I'm in a different realm, you know. My wife and I, I've got a broken heart of experience and broken heart of experiences from a child till I was thir almost 30 years old that God, and that's 20 some years ago and God ultimate deliver, ultimately delivered me from it. Um, parents were great, awesome. Alcoholics bad, probably, but, you know, I mean, I don't have any real major complaints about that. It, um, one day I'll get into it. You know, drugs and just various different things. My wife had some healing problems some major major illness for 35 years I mean like major God healed her from it so we kind of can dive into that you know I got a prodigal son experience the anger issue um, but when I get down there it's like I don't care about the demonic forces that are attacking those people anger stuff you know kinds of reasons why there's some even laziness you know I mean there's all kinds of demonic forces against it but in that realm, it just flows. Well, lately, the Lord's been dealing with me. I've got 10 different cities, maybe 12, and even some names. And I've been writing them down. He told me to get a yellow notebook. We've been to three of them. 
I got one on my mind right now. That's where I'm going with this. Will we keep our focus on the joy of the Lord? What he's doing in our life. All this other stuff can become a, a, a sideshow, a, side a side distraction. You know, um, God, reverse it a little bit and go back to the money piece. The things that God showed me with the homeless ministry, building churches 20, that are going to be open 24-7, and it's, you know, it's in the million dollars range and I'm like you know I'm just up you know middle class don't have that kind of resources you're a billionaire you want to write me a check great awesome but right now today I don't but I have faith in God because he's done so many things in my life and sometimes they're sometimes you know I get it you need money just had a stopped up toilet problem and it turns out we got a broken pipe underneath the house well you know it's probably going to be thousand two thousand three thousand dollars you know money I get it you know you need money I get it you have to have pay the electric bill at your church I, I understand that God needs you know resources I get it I understand it it is part of it you know it's not I'm not sticking my you know going, going down that rabbit hole but my wife and I had this broken heart of ministry and through a period of prayer in her life and my life we weren't looking Opened up at the downtown Dallas shelter. My wife ran into one of the directors. It led to us meeting different people. A chain of events took place. They're like, here's Sunday night service. Go for it. I go down there, buzz the door, let me in. I'm here to open it up, open up the church. PA system in there. I turn the air conditioner down to whatever I want because it's hot in Dallas. Toilet paper stocked. I don't pay the electric bill. I don't clean the church free and clear just boom here it is an open door so God can do that or you know he may have to use use the monetary you know he may put somebody in your in your church that's extremely business minded and just can kind of you know go with that but we put the emphasis on on that instead of the joy of the Lord which is reaching those souls you know That's what that's where we're at. Whether it's reaching them in the church, whether it's you know ours is in the homeless ministry, that doesn't make us any greater than anybody else because we go after the poor. What about the guy that's you know maybe a multimillionaire or very well off that's hooked on drugs? He needs help. He needs salvation. He needs deliverance. You know, rich and famous people do too. I, you know, I don't know where God's placed you. Different classes of life but you know the emphasis doesn't need to be on that the emphasis needs to be on those souls setting people free getting them full of the truth you know getting them full of the the real truth instead of trying to build something you know we can get caught up in building programs at churches and just stuff sidetracked distracted from the real message of the gospel, from the real joy of the Lord. Jesus, when he went to the cross, the joy that was set before him. You know, he's hanging on the cross, and you know, yeah, I'll go another couple minutes. We, religion and even the devil, tries to emphasize the cross, and that's a horrible way to die. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people probably died like that, though. You know, I'm not discounting what he did but that's not where the power was the power was in his obedience to do it to carry on the to carry the sins of the world to let you know for me and you to set us free to become sons of God equals with him I can't give eternal life but I can go out raise the dead heal the sick cast out demons power and authority to walk this earth we got that in us God Jesus and the Holy Spirit live in us there's the joy of the Lord it's awesome he wants his people to be set free in the truth not all this other crap and garbage that you, you know I mean you can be sitting in a church and if it's half full of the truth and half full of lies you know what the, the, I hate to say it but the devil's got a hold of you because you're not hearing the full gospel we can get all twisted up and debate and all kinds of stuff, but if it's not the Spirit of the Lord, I'm not the only one saying this. I'm not, you know, this is not me, and I'm focused on me, and I'm, you know, that was another one of my messages about 
If my people are called by not, my name will humble themselves and pray. It's hard as a minister to be humble when God's downloading all this awesome, cool things in your life. You know? That's, I'd, I'd, I'd rather just be sitting on the church pew a lot of times. I don't even really want the job, you know? But this is the vessel that God created me to be, so I gotta flow in the flow in the flow. Go in the flow. Do what God told me to do. Then the joy of the Lord manifests. Because I'm out doing the will of God. It may be for praying for your neighbor. I've been in church at church service, been over for two hours, and there'll be people on the parking lot at 11, 12 o'clock at night praying for people still. And you know, do you think those people that are getting prayed for that need healing and deliverance really care whether it's a minister or an evangelist or not? No, they don't. They want to see God intervene in their lives. So anyhow, you know, what's your pur your purpose and calling? It, it get messy. Get involved in other people's lives and wherever God sends you and tells you to do. You know? Yeah, we all need church. i got to sit under a pastor. I need direction and authority. And I can't get out of, you know, get out of bounds in, in some areas. But I also got to do what God tells me to do. And one of the things he's been dealing with me, me to do with these 10 cities, I'm going to go back to that and I'm going to end with this. Told me one day to go to Italy, Texas. Two, two years ago, I'm sitting there. Italy, Texas, that's 60 miles from Dallas. I knew where it was because I drove through there many times visiting my folks on my way to visit my folks. Looked it up, 300 people. I'm like, there's no glamour or glitz in that, but that's what God told me to do. Tell my wife, long story short, took us three months. We finally get down there. God opened some awesome doors, told us exactly what to do, and we did. We got a chance to minister to people for hours. One lady for hours. Told me to go to Little Elm. Told me specifics to ask people, certain types of workers and people and places and things to go, two of them in specific, in specific directions, very specific. Followed it to a T and did exactly what he told me to do. God opened some awesome doors and we got a chance to just minister to people. I mean, they broke down and cried. We just really touched people's hearts. Got right in there where they were at. God told us to do it and it all just kind of transpired. Well, now, you know, he told me, one day he told me, he said, I want you to go to Canyon Creek, Illinois. So I'm like, okay, God, I don't want to go. You know, what's in Illinois? It's a thousand miles away and it's a hassle for us for my wife to get off work, it's just not, it, it's just not real, I can't pull the trigger and just say, okay, let's go, because we're not full-time ministry yet, so, I don't want to go, I'd rather go visit my kids, my sons live in San Diego, cool, cool, right on the beach, cool spot, I want to go on a vacation in the mountains somewhere, Colorado, or Hawaii, oh, if home in Hawaii, would have been cool, Illinois, so I look it up, Google it, couldn't find it, 30 minutes went by. There's no Canyon Creek, Illinois. Well, that's what you told me, God. All of a sudden, an ad for Zillow pops up. You know, pop ups, and I hate that. And it's a house on Canyon Creek, Illinois, in normal Illinois. And the Lord said, That's it. I want you to go to normal Illinois. He said, I want you to spend three days driving there, spend the day in normal, and three days driving back. I'm like, oh, and he said, it's not going to be another normal day. Well, this was in December, and just long story, just different things happened. We just couldn't go. Kept getting pushed off and pushed off. Finally, told me to go over the 4th of July week. I'm like, oh, it's, well, where we work at, the building's going to be closed for the whole week. So, boom, there it is. We're off. Got the whole week. A setup from God. So last night, you know, I'm starting to prepare. I'm getting copies of my book. I got ordered 35 copies of the book. The Lord inspired me to write about visions, and you can get a free copy. You just have to email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com. Look at some of my other videos. It'll kind of, there's, the message is intertwined in there. It's not me, me or the book. It's the awesomeness of the visions. And they're inspirational. And I left out the interpretation specifically because it's about you the reader not me so 
get that prepared, some messages that the Lord want me to prepare for. I'm going to get some Bibles. I'm kind of just in that mode of, you know, the joy of the Lord. Awesome. Cool. God told me to do these other cities, and I already did, and some awesome things happened. And the reason why I'm not telling the whole testimony is because I don't want to necessarily embarrass these people or air other people's dirty laundry. But awesome things happened exactly specifically the way the Lord told me. So it's like, okay, God, I, I know this is going to happen. I know there's going to be something awesome in this. The joy of the Lord. Kind of an adventure. Well, last night, I'm sitting there, I'm talking to my wife, and, you know, we're kind of praying about it, and kind of mentally getting prepared, physically getting prepared, spiritually getting prepared. Idol. The word idol starts coming to my mind. Idol. And then I'm like, well, Lord, you know, and I'm thinking about the trip, and it's like, is it supposed to be, is it a city? You know, idol, Illinois. Idle, Missouri. We're going to go through Missouri. You know, we're going to round back on the back trip. We're going to go through Arkansas. But, you know, it's like. So the Lord spoke to me and he said, Idlewood, Illinois. I want you to go to Idlewood, Illinois on your trip. And I'm like, Illinois is a big, you know, it's. I mean, we're already going to be spending six, seven days driving. It's like. Kind of, kind of seeming compressed, and a lot of time in the car, and it's like I don't really want to add another city. I don't, you know, I don't want to do that. So I look it up, and sure enough, it's kind of on our way home, sort of. It's about 50 miles out of the way, but not a lot. Pretty close to kind of normal Illinois, a couple hundred miles away. It's like okay, and then he said, and then I want you to go to the nursing home, and I was like okay. So, and then I saw this vision, and I was pulling up into this nursing home, and it was just a beautiful man, manicured lawn and garden, and just flowers everywhere. It was beautiful. It's gorgeous. It was just all this flowery, beautiful stuff. And the Lord said, "How beautiful is the glory of my people?" I'm like, okay. I've kind of digested that. I don't know what God's, God's got in store for us, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to go there and do what he told me to do. I'm going to go there and, you know, I'm just going to go. Because that's who me, me and my wife are, you know. So, anyhow, what's God calling you to do? You know, go talk to your neighbor, pray for the people at Walmart, the clerk at 7-Eleven, the guy sitting next to you at church, the guy or gal sitting next to you at church or at work. It's time for the body to get up off their butt, I hate to say it, and out of the church and get out there in the highways and byways and the streets and start beating beating down the path. And, you know, getting people set free, full of the Holy Ghost, full of his goodness. What's Jesus put in you? Use it. Go. So it's one of my other messages. Use what God got got for you. This one's getting kind of long. Sorry, I'm gonna go another minute. I hate to do that, but so Use what you got. Look at some of my other YouTube videos. Um, please comment on them, share them, likes, dislikes. Um, email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com if you want a copy of the free book. No strings attached. If you want a copy of the message about God's image of you, which is actually Christ in you, the hope of glory message. About how God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit all live in you, where his vessels, scriptures are backing up, 15, 20 of them. I'm not making this up. Long, you know, 38 years to get here. But I heard this message back in the 80s. So, you know, I, I saw the sign from a church God is near. I don't want a near God. You know, close but no cigar. Living in me? Awesome. It's in the scripture. It's in the Bible. The Holy Spirit will lead, guide, and direct you to all truths. You know? That's the hour we're living in. He wants to use all of us if we're available, if we'll let him. You know? Different parts and different journeys and different things. It's just way too much to, to go into. I'm going to have to kind of break it up a little bit. But anyhow, God bless you. We love you. Um, you know, the joy of the Lord is us reaching the lost and bringing them into the kingdom, into sonship. And, you know, whether it's the 
prodigal son that's within church or not in church or the person next to us that maybe even just might need some encouragement. Uh, I don't know what, what God's telling you to do. Just do it. And then you know what? The joy of the Lord will flow out of you, flow through you, and you just get in this realm. I mean, most of y'all know what I'm talking about. If you really are walking with Christ, it's like you just get laser focused on, on you know, God told me, he said, his church, a lot of his church in the world was going after the action and not the acts. God wants us to be in the act, the act of obedience. What does he want you to do? It may not, you know, it may not be seen. That's okay. Like I said, we put too much emphasis on prominence and positions and monetary things that claim to be a move of God. Are they really? Okay, maybe, maybe not, you know. You might have 60,000 people in your church, but are you really telling the truth? Or are you just a sheep in, or a wolf in sheep's clothing, being a hypocrite, lying to them? Give them a warm, fuzzy feeling. There's a lot to it, you know? But anyhow, look at my message, who's your source? And I mean, I'm just, you got to kind of take them all into context. They'll make sense. I'm not trying to just be about me. I'm just being that vessel that God created me to be and being real with you and just kind of want to just get it out there. So anyhow, God bless you. Comment, you know, likes, dislikes. Um, just, you know, you can email me but or share this video with others. But anyhow, God bless you. Um, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I'm going to end with that.